Hello, everybody. Welcome to the class. How are you today? Well, I'm sorry I'm late, but there was no energy at home and there was no internet. My internet was not working properly. So I had to cross the city so I can be with you tonight. Hey, anyway. Teacher, good evening. Good evening, how are you? Okay, okay, no problem, teacher. Good evening, teacher. We, we got no you. Problem. Yeah, you know, that happens sometimes. And yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I like to solve things, but I had to drive 30 minutes so I can come here and be with you. The good thing is that we're going to have the class, okay? Okay, we hear you clear and, and look. Very good. I hope the charge of the computer works because I forgot that at home. Anyways, let's give it a shot. So um, first thing that we're going to choose uh, is, uh, well, let me see here if I can see. Uh, yeah, we're going to check about the attendance, of course. So, Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher, good evening. Good evening. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Blanc Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Perfect, so we're going to start a class of today. And let me just charge everything very quickly here. Okay. So we're going to continue a little bit more about stereotypes, okay? And then uh, let me just check. Actually, we're gonna check something different. That was something that we were going to check another day, but today is the day, okay. Oh, perfectly, and I got you. Okay. Okay, so we're going to check a little bit on how to improve our English speaking skills. So we're going to check some words, some readings, some tips, and then you can provide some feedback about this one, of course. So the first part, uh, let's see, Heidi, could you please help me with that? Not possible. Jose Osping, is it possible for you to start? Me, teacher, if you want. Of course, thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, uh, 12 tips. Yep. Tips on how to improve your English speaking skills. English is the world's lingua franca. Yeah? Yep. Okay, yep. A common language that people with different native languages can use to communicate. The more fluent you are in English, the more interesting, exciting, and insightful conversations you can have. 
what great is you can improve English speaking skills without a classroom partner or a stressful lessons. This article will take you beyond the foundational aspects to reach communicate communicative competence. Very good. So what did you get from this little introduction? Um, in general, English is one of the uh, more speaking speaking or no more spoken languages. So uh, in the first paragraph, uh, they say that uh, it's a common language uh, for different regions or, or ethnics, okay, uh, that uh, we use to communicate. It's almost um, an universal, or uh, I don't know how to say mundial, world, worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. yeah. Worldwide uh, language uh, to communicate uh, between uh, you and other another uh, persons. Um, after that, they uh, in, in the reading says that uh, <clears throat> the more the more the more level, okay. Uh, if it can say it's like that, the more level you have, the more interesting are. Uh, your um, um, uh -huh, your your conversations with other people, and obviously it's easy is it, easier to communicate with people around the world. Or if you travel abroad, uh, you can uh, easily um, communicate. Uh, and maybe in some occasions you can. Uh, um superar overcome yeah overcome yeah to overcome situations or some situations that uh could be like uh ask for a coffee in a coffee shop yeah uh it's a common thing that you that that people uh, are that that people do sorry that that people do in in almost country i think so if you travel to other region uh, uh, at least I think that you have uh, to ask for some coffee, okay? And I think it's, it's uh, obviously this is the this is the main reason that uh, we are in in this in this course, okay? To to improve our English uh, speaking skills, but not only speaking, but also uh, obviously reading, writing um listening and and things like this okay perfect very good thank you and uh, yeah you are so true i mean we know that english is the language that you speak if you go anywhere in the world i mean uh, that is the the language that you need to speak first right of course there are other languages that you can learn after the english but uh, english is the like the universal language and of course whenever you are speaking i mean Everybody knows that speaking is the skill that is the most difficult whenever you are learning English, whenever you are practicing English, because there are many words, many ideas that you are not able to complete, you are not able to put together sometimes, um, depending on many things and many situations, but that will be the most important. So this is something that I found very interesting, so we can discuss today about that one. And then, of course, we're going to practice speaking. So says, uh, build a strong foundation. In order to express yourself eloquently in English, you need a wide variety of vocabulary and the correct pronunciation. So that is something that is very important, right? To express the idea correctly, to, for example, remember when we were learning about the reported speech, right? That was kind of strange for us because we need, in Spanish, we use that in a different way but we need to learn the way that we are going to use that in English. So it's going to sound uh, natural when you are speaking with other people and also they understand. Pronunciation is also a very important thing because I mean, words very basic like Caribbean, right? So in Spanish, is Car people that speak Spanish, they say Caribbean, but it's not like that. Caribbean is the pronunciation. And if you do not say it correctly, of course, the other person probably is not going to understand the whole idea on this. So the first one, number one, 
let's see how long is this. It's a little bit long, so. It's going to be for Jose Wilfredo. Is it possible for you, Jose Wilfredo? I guess it's not possible. Okay, so um, Danny, could you please help us with the number one? Yeah, of course. Uh, number one is expand your vocabulary. Vocabulary. Uh, learn new words every day. Mm. Cleaning new words day in, day out is a good way to widen your vocabulary. Commit to a suitable target. It can be three daily words or it can be 10 daily words. Even, even if you only have time to learn one new word per day, it is still worth trying. By learning one word every day after one year, you will have learned 365 new English words. Write the number down uh, to remind yourself frequently. If you have a learning partner, share with her so that she can check on your progress. Some good resources uh, for work are the news, the news songs and TV shows, depending on your daily habits. If you love listening to music, Pay attention to the lyrics and take note of the words you do not know. Some often contain a lot of use, useful vocabulary, phrases, and expressions. Therefore, they are great for learning English. Learning words in context will help you remember them much easier. And you will be surprised by how quickly your vocabulary will grow. Okay. So what did you get from the first part? Um, the first part um, is, um, is telling us that um, we have to, we can learn uh, a number of words a day and at the minimum, if, if we learn one per day, uh, at the end of the, of the year, we can learn uh, uh, 365 um, uh, English words. And then um, we can, there is some tips that like, we can learn the news, uh, listen to songs, and watch some TV shows in order to um, to learn new 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 words to add new words to our vocabulary. Very good, perfect. So I have a question for everybody now. So how do you learn new vocabulary? What do you do so you can learn more vocabulary and improve your English level? Aha, I'm listening to you. In my case, um, I read some um, papers or books or, or, or articles in the internet and, um, and also I uh, listen some uh, sometimes music and sometimes podcasts. And when a word I, I don't understand, well, I I go to dictionary and, and search it. Very good. Actually, that is a good practice. Remember that I told you that it's better for you to go to the dictionary so you understand the usage of the word. There are many ways that you can use a word. And then uh, depending on the context, depending on what is next to it, and that is a very good way. Very good, Danny. So the rest of the people, what do you do so you can get more vocabulary? In my case, teacher, uh, my favorite method, if I can name in that way, is listen to music. Um, actually, uh, not just to learn new vocabulary, is for practice my pronunciation too. Sometimes I choose uh, maybe a song that 
uh, the, the, the tempo is faster than others. And I practice my pronunciation too. And when I don't know uh, some words of the, of the song, I search in Google uh, to understand the rest of the song and, and just for learn and the meaning of that word that I, that maybe at the time I, I didn't know. Okay, very good. That is a very good practice as well. You know, one of the best things that we can do whenever we are in the advanced level is to do things that we really enjoy. So if you really like movies, you can watch movies totally in English, or maybe a movie that you really like that is your favorite, you can just watch it in English. So, and what you do is very good. I mean, you try to to find some songs that maybe you like, but also they are kind of fast and that they have vocabulary. So you're going to include many things inside of that one. I have a question for you, actually. What is the song that is like the fastest, the, the one that speaks very fast singer? Uh, what is the one that you have found that is like the most difficult to sing or to, to pronounce? Could you repeat again the question, teacher? Yeah, what is the song that in your experience in this activity that you do is the fastest whenever they're speaking, they're singing the, the words? Mm, there's a song that, in my case, I love this song of, of Dua Lipa, Levitating. For oh, me, yeah. the, the beginning of the song is very fast, but I love it. <laughs> so I'm on my way to 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 learn the whole song and, and practice a lot, a lot. Very good. Sounds like a very good thing. So we need to do a karaoke one time. So we can practice together. Very good. Perfect. Any other person wants to share the way that you improve your vocabulary? Teacher also reading a book. Um, once I had the chance to attend the Alhambra High School, and the teacher used to make us um, do this kind of, how do you say, features? Mm, uh, those are like pieces of paper with it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A piece of paper. So in the front, we used to write the sentence uh, with, the, with the word we didn't know, uh, underline it. And in the back of the piece of paper, the definition, and if it was a verb, a noun, or what kind of word was, right? And then uh, we used to have a, a, a quiz every week and he used to pick one of our, our, of our pieces of papers and show us the sentence. And we, we had to say uh, the meaning of the word or be, it worked a lot. Teacher, we can hear, we can hear you. You are in mute. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Very good, perfect. So yes, the thing is that uh, that is a very professional way for you to get more vocabulary. I mean, getting the word, I mean, for example, have you seen the spelling bees in the United States? Those are very good, right? Where they, the kids are there in a, in a contest and they have to, to spell the words and sometimes they don't understand the word because sometimes there are very complex words. And then uh, they ask an example of the word in a sentence so they can understand the context of the word. And then they are able to spell it, even though they, they have never heard of that word. I mean, it's a very good thing. So things like that are very good. So to try to, uh, to get the word, to understand the word, to to feel the word, so that is a very good thing. Definitely, it's a good thing. Any other person wants to share? What do you do for you to improve vocabulary? Okay, so the last part says learn words in in phrases in chunks. So, Ana Claudia, could you what please help us with that? Sure. Uh, learn words in phrases and chunks. It is important that you uh, learn words in groups. For example, you refer to beverage as a glass of wine, a pint of beer, 
a cup of tea, a pot of coffee, etc. It is better to learn those phrases than merely wine, beer, tea, and so on. <clears throat> Sorry. You can also benefit from learning words that are related. The moon oh. has four faces during a lunar month, crescent, given, waxing, and wanting. It, it is more efficient to learn all four words at the same time. Good, what did you get from this? Hey, we must learn to name situation or things like in, in global, like a combo. <laughs> Uh, sometimes gets uh, gives a better idea of what we're talking about. Um, English is like in that way, they speak less word than Spanish, but uh, you must uh, uh, you must uh, tell the the whole story like in three or four words, not flowering too much like in Spanish. So it's important to, to speak like in, um, uh, like in phrase. Very good. So this is actually a very good tip. So uh, yeah, we can understand one word. What is the meaning of this word? Mm -hmm. But if you learn the context or how you can use that in a sentence, it's much better. And that's mm -hmm. why it says learn words and phrases that are like that one, cup of tea, a pot of coffee, or chunks that are pieces that are together, right? Words that are together and create not a phrase, but they go together. So mm -hmm. phrases verbs are also very, very important in English because I love, I mean, in the United States, they really love the phrasal verbs and mm -hmm. they, uh, they use them a lot. Some of those are kind of, kind of crazy, kind of weird. Some of them, they don't use two words, but they use three words. Mm -hmm. So that is also very, very important. Okay. So a uh, question for everybody is talking about vocabulary, uh, beverages. What is that? Or the drinking drinks. Sorry. Very good drinks uh, that you can have, right? So we have a glass of wine, wine. a pint of beer, a cup of tea, a pot of coffee, etc. So I guess you know that one. So what is, what is, let's say, a pint of beer? How do you explain that? A little. A little. Very good. A lot of beer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot just of beer. That, like... but just that, but I don't know what is a pot of. A pot of coffee. <laughs> okay, very good. So, uh, uh, anybody knows what is a pot of coffee? Oh yeah, I think it's a it's a um maybe I don't know how to say como medida. Um, uh, but huh? uh, yeah, it's a measure for you to. Oh, okay, it's a measure, uh -huh. but um, I think it's more than a, a simple uh, cup of. Of coffee, okay. I I think it's a um, like you say, a, a phrasal verb. Not in this case, not a verb, but this is a, fr a phrasal phrase. But I don't know if it's correct. It's like a in Spanish, una taza de café or or, or something like that. Okay. So that is it. This these words they go together, right? So you say. Uh, a glass of water that goes together. Uh, you can say, give me a little bit of water, give me, but the most common is to say a, a glass of water, right? That is the most common thing. Would you like a, a glass of water? And a pot of coffee is like that. It's, it's like a jar of coffee. But since this is, is for hot beverages, it's like a pot when you put some coffee and it's boiling and then you make the coffee and then you have a pot of coffee. So it's okay, okay. for you to serve many cups, not many, but some cups of, co of coffee in this case. Okay, and yeah, so it says that it's better to understand that instead of just learning wine, beer, tea, or any separate words. And also there are benefits from words that are related. So you will, we will remember that one. And the yeah. next example is very good. The moon has four faces during lunar month, the crescent, the given, the waxing and the warning. Of course, those are the four faces of the moon. And 
you can you can learn that one. I mean, if you have an uh, like a hobby or if you like to learn about things, you can do it in English, and then you are going to get words from that one, right? Good, good. So the next one says improve your pronunciation. So this part is going to be for let's see, uh, yourself. Okay, teacher two. In the whole paragraph? Hey, let me just check. No, we're going to split it. So it's going to be, let me see, one, two, three paragraphs. Three paragraphs. Okay. Improve your pronunciation. You might know a lot of words, but if you fail to say them correctly, you will not be understood. That seems like a waste of time spent on remembered words, right? When using online dictionaries such as Macmillan and Merriam-Webster, make use of the little speaker symbol to check the pronunciation of any word that you are not sure about. There are English pronunciation tutorials and YouTube or podcasts like English Pronunciation Pub or American English Pronunciation to teach you the many aspects of American English pronunciation. When you are ready for something more challenging, try out tongue, twist, tongue twisters. Some examples are available here. Personally, I love the fork handles sketch from the show, The Two Ronnies. It might not be a typical example of everyday conversation, but it shows you the re the richness is that right? Richness? Richness. Richness, okay. Richness of spoken English. Besides, you will have a good laugh. Good. What do you get from this? That we have a lot of sources to improve the pronunciation. Uh, we, don't, we don't have to stop in just one source. So we, if we are very interested in, to learn, and improve our pronunciation and and improve our vocabulary. We have a lot of sources to to learn. And personally, I think that uh, nowadays we have a lot of information uh, in internet. It's crazy, and, and how we can we can find a, a lot of sites uh, and social medias. Uh, we sometimes we can find. A recommendations maybe for from I don't know profiles on Twitter. Actually, I, yesterday yesterday I was reading is uh, some of some a lot of a lot of some of recommendation of of one person that I follow on Twitter and what sites he he recommends to 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 improve the the reading and the listening. So that's what I get from this situation. Very good, perfect. Actually, that is a very good tip and uh, you are so right. Nowadays, if you really want to learn, if you really want to improve one thing or the other thing, a lot of resources exist. You can even download applications for you to practice. There are videos, there are a lot of things, dictations that you can do to the computer, so you will be able to improve the pronunciation. Pronunciation is very, very important. I know, I know that by speaking with us, I mean, within the same people, sometimes here in, in the same country, the pronunciation might be um, not big deal because we are able to understand each other. But whenever you go to other country, that then becomes very, very important. So. Yes, we need to take advantage of all the resources. Here, of course, in the class, uh, you can ask how is the pronunciation word or the other word. Also, whenever you are reading, uh, if you have a doubt, you can you can ask. I mean, you can stop and ask, what is the pronunciation of this word? And of course, it's a pleasure to have you on that one. And uh, But there are many resources. And if you also watch some videos, if you watch the news, movies, then you are going to get more and more the, the best pronunciation. Of course, if you go to other country, you are going to you are going to 
definitely learn that one. But you can do it from here. It's a little bit slower, but it's possible. It depends on everybody. So you can, you can do it yourself. If you need some suggestions, of course, you can ask me and I can send you some, some tips on that. One. But sometimes that's why I bring these kind of, these kinds of readings so we understand and improve ourselves. So uh, let's see if we can find, find some words. Um, what is a waste of time? Spend the time. Spend. Yeah, when spend you spend the time, <laughs> spend the time with any productivity. Very good. So when the result is not good and you spend some time on doing something, right? Okay, so what else? Let's see. What are tongue twisters? No, In I Spanish? Can't. In Spanish, I'm uh, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have some of those. Yeah. So in my end, let's see. Yeah, these are like tips for you to do it, but there are some of those. Let me just remember. Okay. This one, this one is very, very hard. To sit in silent silence in a dull, dark, dark, in a pencil, in a prison, in a lifelong lock, awaiting the sensation of a short, sharp shock from a chimp and chippy chop <laughs> with a deep black block. In my end, that one. And it should be very fast, right? So let's practice that one. But let me see if there is any other that is a little bit easier. How much woo woo? Uh, this is very difficult for me. The W is kind of difficult. How much woo woo a woo to chalk with a woo chalk wood chalk wood? I don't know. This is very difficult. As long as she, no, this is not good. Um, as concerned on Islam and the time the summer, might be this one. Mm, this is too long. But you can do this one actually. Ah, this is a good one. So let's give it a try. A flea and a fly. A flea and a fly flew up in a flu. Say the flea, let's a fly. Let's say the fly, let's a flee. So they flee through a flower in the flu. So the faster that you can do it, we're going to practice a little bit right now. I'm going to give you one minute for you to practice in your mind and then we're going to come up and, and check. And also the good thing about this one is that you can see here, like the vocabulary, what is to flee, to run away. What is a flea? A uh, tiny insect that drains the blood of mammals. What is a flow? An imperfection or weakness. And what is the flu? Uh, the pipe or opening of a chimney. So for you to understand that one. So who wants to be the first one to practice the tongue twister? Aha, uh -huh. everybody's going to do it. I'll be the first one. Very good, Heidi. Let's listen to Heidi. <laughs> be the second. <laughs> of course. Take your time. Breathe. Oh my God. And be, be relaxed <laughs> so you can flow with the words. I'm getting nervous. Okay. Nervous. A flea and a fly flew up in the flu. Said the flea, let us fly. Said the flu, let us flee. So they flew, they flew through a fly in the flu. Okay, very good. That was very nice. Very good, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay. A flea and a fly flew up in the flu. Say the flea let us fly. Say the fly let us flee. So they flew through a flow in the flu. <laughs> very good. That was very fast. Very nice. Now let's check. Uh, uh, let's see. Jose Wilfredo. Okay. A flea and a fly flew up in the flu. Say the flea, let us fly. Say the fly, let us flee. So they flew through a flow in the flu. Good. That was very good. Nice. Raymond, let's see. Is how is it for you? Not possible, Raymond. Okay, Jose Spin. Is it possible for you, Hussein? Okay, Danny. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, here I go. Um, a flea and a fly flew up in the flu. 
say the they the flee, let us fly, say the they the fly, let us flee. So they flew through a flower in the flu. <laughs> okay, very good, perfect. That's nice, Danny. Uh, Giselle. Okay. A flea and a fly flew up in the flu. Say the flea, let us fly. Say the fly, let us flee. So they so they flew. What? So they flew through a flow in the flu. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. That's nice. So let's see. Uh, Roberto, is it possible for you? Not possible. Ada Susena. Okay, teacher. A fee and a fly. A fee and a fly or the flu. Side the yes. side the flea, let I flu. Side the fly, let I flee feel. So they flee through a fly in the flu. Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, Yvonne, let's see how it goes for you. Hello, Yvonne, is it possible for you? Okay, Maria Alejandra. Hi, teacher, sorry. <laughs> okay, a uh, flea and a fly, flea up in the flu, say the flea, let us fly, say the fly, let us flee, so the flea throw a flower in the flu. Okay, very good, perfect. Roxana, let's see how it goes for you. Okay. A flea and a fly flew up in a flu. Say the flea, let us fly. Say the fly, let us flee. So the flea flew, throw a fly in the flu. Okay, very good, nice. Juan Miguel, this is your turn. Okay, let's see. A flea and a fly flew up in a flu. Say the flea, let us fly. Say the fly, let us flee. So they flew through a flow in the flu. Yeah. Very good. Nice. Very good. <laughs> Perfect. Francisco Eduardo. Is it possible for you, Francisco? Not possible. Marcus. Okay, uh, a flea and a fly flew up in a flu. Say the flea, let us fly. Say the fly, let us flee. So they flew, flee through a flower in a flu. Very good, perfect, nice. That was fast. Uh, Fernando, is it possible for you? Okay, not possible. I guess everybody had done it. So you can see that. I mean, this is a good thing for you to try to speak faster and try to understand the pronunciation of the words. So you can do it several times. The faster that you do it, the better. And then you will try to, to say the words. The words, I mean, I know that they are similar and that's why this is difficult. Of course, you are going to have fun and I mean, laugh a little bit. So I know that when you are trying to do it very fast, sometimes you can get stuck in some words, but the if you continue doing these things, you will be able to, for example, in these words, you will be able to, to pronounce them very well. Fly, flew, flew, flee, fly. So through that is also kind of similar. So it's a good exercise that we can do. Let's go back. And then it says, um, there are no other things here. The richness, what is the richness? What is that word? It can be the most valuable. The most valuable, very good. So that is it, nice. Okay, so let's continue. The next, the other paragraphs actually, the other three from learning is going to be four, let's see. Marcus. Okay. Um, um, learning with this type of authentic videos is key to improving, improving your pronunciation because you're listening to media by and for a native speaker. 
But finding videos on your own or trying to learn with just a video can sometimes be tricky. If you need some help finding a relevant English video, for example, of authentic pronunciation, fluent online learning program is filled with real content and extra tools to help you get started. Uh, the videos in the program each have interactive subtitles, which allows you to easily see the definition of every word that is spoken. It's great for a pronunciation practice, particularly because every word you click on will be automatically added to a personalized work bank with audio you can listen to later. Sorry to chair, I cannot hear you. So yeah, can you hear me sometimes? You know, I have set up this with a with my hand that is, is going to go up and down, up and down, but sometimes it doesn't work here because of the connection. So okay. um, the question that I was telling you that, let's say that that was just for learning with videos. What did you understand on that one? And uh, this tool can, can help us to, to, to have a, a bank of words and, and see uh, videos and learn from that. Videos, new words, new vocabulary, we can also say the words and see the, the meaning or see the words later. And yeah, I think it's a good practice to, to say okay. the words and also see the, the meaning and have at least to, to really uh, increase her vocabulary. Actually, you are so right. I mean, when, whenever you are watching some videos, you are going to check many things. So if you go to YouTube, for example, you will be able to see the pronunciation of words, intonation of words. So you say what they are expressing because they are the intonation of a phrase or a sentence or anything like that. Also, the vocabulary, I mean, you will be able to turn on the, the captions, the closed captions. So you will be able to see the words there. If they are speaking very fast, you will be able to to uh, reduce the, the speed of the video or increase it if you want it. And uh, I mean, it's a very good thing. It's a very good thing. If you really go and, I mean, you need just to watch a video every day. If you watch one video, but I mean, really checking the words, the pronunciation, checking the vocabulary and learning those words. I mean, one year you will be very, very good in English in pronunciation and in all the aspects of speaking English. Uh, it's something that we can do every day. I know that we're busy, but I mean, five minutes video is good enough for, for everybody. Okay, number three says learn the natural flow of English. Let me just check how long. Yeah, this is for just one person. This is going to be for, let's see. Uh, Maria Alejandra. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Learn the natural flow of English. Uh, being, being. Being able to say individual words correctly is great, but the secret of the speaker's fluency in English lies in the flow of the sentence. Uh, when, whenever you read a piece of, of poetry, poetry. A poetry, listen on a melody song, or watch a hilarious sitcom, pay attention to the following. Linking. Notice how native, native, native. Native, native speaker link words together. Join two songs, making a song of disappear, changing a song of a better flow. Contractions, contractions at certain form for two words. For example, I plus am. Uh, I don't know how to say am. I. <laughs> I. He plus will hell. Hell. Uh, they. They plus have. Dave. Do plus not don't. Stress. They are stressed syllables in a word and stressed for words in a sentence. Rhythm. Rhythm. The, rhythm. the rhythm is the overall result of a stress contraction and linking is 
It is the ups and downs, the musical pictures of English. Good. What did you get from this? <laughs> Maybe that when uh, you learn or how you try to uh, sound naturally in English or <laughs> uh then uh, these persons do use a uh, i don't know contraction where the the two words and try to shirt for that maybe is that the reason when that have more abilities to speak more fast or faster sorry yeah. um and um, uh, maybe <laughs> i don't know Okay, that is fine. That is fine, Maria Alejandra. So, yeah, I mean, uh, English, every language has like a natural way of speaking. So if you see, for example, a movie in Japanese, they have a way of saying the words that is different, right? If you see something that is from Russia, intonation, everything is different. So the first thing that we need to remember is that English is a different language, that we cannot try to do that like we do the Spanish a conversation. So linking is very, very common in English, more in American English. They they bend together sounds, like how often, how often do you go to the beach? So they do that things very, very, very commonly. And uh, contractions, you know, the contractions, the problem is that sometimes when they're speaking, I mean, sometimes you are not able to listen to that one. So you can say, for example, they've gone to the beach, Dave. So he's there, Dave. But they speak so fast that sometimes it's very difficult to get it, but it's there. For example, do you remember when we were learning English for the first time? I mean, people sometimes they say United States because in the movies, it sounds like that, but it's not. It's united and it's there whenever they, they say the words. It's United States, United, but it's fast. So that's what we need to learn. The contractions and linking sounds in English are very, very common. Stress also is very important. So there are syllables, like I, I was telling you the word Caribbean, right? The pirates are the Caribbean. So it's different the stress. So we need to learn those things. And the rhythm, of course. So the rhythm, uh, if you see movies in English, you will see that the pace, the way they speak, even when they are speaking very fast, sometimes you are able to understand if a person is angry or is uh, projecting a feeling because of the rhythm of the words, the rhythm of all the sentences. So all those things are very important. That's why watching videos is very important because you will you will learn from, let's say the, uh, the natural, the native speakers, even though, Remember that it's going to be different. I mean, if you watch a movie, that, that is like when you are speaking with me, I try to speak clear. I, I try to speak uh, with, with pronunciation that is very clear whenever I'm speaking so you understand what I'm saying. But if you see a movie, sometimes they speak faster, right? They speak like in a different way because they are just speaking, not trying to communicate something. Uh, and if you compare also a movie with the news, you will see that there is a big difference. News is faster. That is like, and they are very clear, very clear in the words that they say. They are very fast, but they are, the pronunciation is very good. So the news is one of the best way for you to, to understand pronunciation and to get some fluency because you will be able to get in a very fast way, a lot of vocabulary, pronunciation, intonation, very good things. So it's a very, very nice exercise, that one. So let's check some words. Being able, what is being? For the verb to be is the... Going to be? Present. Okay. Progressive? No, I don't remember. No, no, no. I don't remember. <laughs> Okay, very good, but you are so right. So yeah. being uh -huh. as present continuous okay. as participle is it's well it's not a participle, but it's like a, a gerund. This is like a gerund. Mm, gerund, that's yeah. true. I because the present continuous is the verb to be plus the ing. But I change. 
but it, yes. no, but it's good. I mean, the important is that you don't remember that one, but you know the word and that you are able to speak. So at this point, that is the <laughs> best thing, right? Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what is flow. Sentences that can be said easily. Very good. The way that you use the, the language so it flows in a natural way, right? Okay. Uh, what is, let's see. Melodic. What is that one? How do you explain that word? Nice sound. Okay, like a nice sound. Mm -hmm. Sound. Uh, something like, well, it says listen to a melodic sound. It's like the melody, right? That is part of music. What is something that is hilarious? Something very funny. Something very funny. Very good. So a hilarious sitcom. We're going to speak today about sitcoms, actually. Um, what else? Let's see. I don't think there are many others. Very good. So number four, build English speaking uh, confidence. Uh, that is going to be for Roxanne. Okay. One of the biggest barriers to developing English speaking skill is confident. It is certainly sometimes that all language learners have difficulty, difficulty with and one of the best way to overcome it is to get out there and practice. The best way to, to do to do this is to try speaking English with strangers. The following videos give some tips about avoiding mistakes and that can help you to focus on a sometimes forgotten com component of language learning, confidence. It is possible to read yourself of any English speaking by building a strong foundation in the language. Good, what did you get from this? Well, in short, uh, that say that the best way to, to learn English is doing, is speaking and try to looking for uh, strangers to practice and maybe for the native language, I guess, because to try to develop the, um, I don't know, how do you say that? Uh, you need to try to understand in the first one, the sounds of the word. And maybe that's why you uh, call pronounced the words. But the first one you need to do it, and, in, and it's not important to mistake, but you need to try to improve. Very good, so that is it. You need to be confident, right? That you are able to communicate yourself. Of course, maybe we're not perfect. We are going to make some mistakes. And, mm -hmm. uh, but that is very important. Do you remember when you were jumping from the basic to the intermediate? that you, you have to do that step, you have to take the step so you are able to speak a little bit more. So whenever you forgot about Spanish, you were able to speak in a better way. Of course, as I was saying, there are some mistakes. It's important. And that's why probably it's better for you to speak with strangers or native speakers because they are going to be able to correct your pronunciation, the way that you use some words, and that is good, that's good. It's good for, for us to listen to them. And, mm -hmm. uh, but that is very important. I mean, to be confident that you, you will be able to do a good, a good job and then to just improve those little things that you need to improve. 
good. Uh, what is barriers? Uh, stop in the in the way. Very good. And yeah. Maybe a wall, a wall that you put uh, by yourself. Very good. Like a wall, like a boundary. Do you remember that word? Boundary. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Good. Nice. Let's see. Uh, well, let's remember this one. What is to overcome? Get over. Get, get over through getting something. Over, getting over something. Very good. So it's to get over something, somebody, some experiences, some things that has happened to you. Very good. And let's see. What is to avoid? It says avoiding mistakes. Avoid. Escape. Okay, escape, uh -huh, maybe try escape. to not try to not do in something. Very good. Try not to do, right? Try to not to have or do something. And let's see. I don't think there is any other. Okay. Um, so do you speak with people? I mean, do you practice with other people besides the English class? This is a, a question that I have for everybody. Sometimes, teacher, in my case, I practice with my sister. Okay. Um, yeah. She she has a very good level. She I think she's better than me. So uh, here in my house, uh, she's the one that I choose to practice. And sometimes it's funny because also my dad uh, speak a little bit and my brother too. So sometimes I just say them like, I want to practice, just talk to me in English. And it's funny because, you know, we have we are having dinner sometimes or, or, I don't know, just watching TV or just spending the time together in the living room. And we are, when we speak in English and my mom, and my mom is like, oh my God. <laughs> so in my case, um, with my family, and, but, uh, most of the time with my with my sister okay very good so that is a good thing that you are able to speak with not only one another but to more than one person so that is very good nice what about the rest of the people in my case i put in practice in my job very good so yeah because I have to I have to show I have to present some uh, files to the could be main client could be main, main client so I have to to speak a lot and I have to explain it. then to speak with my co-workers because most of them are from Hindi also, they have a different accent. That is very good. Yeah. That's right. Very good. So you have also some people for you to practice with. So that is very, very good. Nice. What about the other people? Well, if you don't have somebody to practice to, uh, try to, try to find friends, try to find uh, people, you know, there is always somebody that speaks English and also probably they need, they need to speak. So it's going to be a very good way for you to practice with somebody else's, get some other people's accent pronunciation. So you will be able to help other and get help. So it's going to be a very good thing. Good, my friends. So uh, we're going to stop for a while. And of course, we're going to check the attendance. Let me just move this a little bit. Okay. Let's see, here we are. 
Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Eh, José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Sorry, sorry. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ivette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Ivonne Moreno de Hernández. Okay, so thank you, uh, Yvonne. Let's continue with the class. What are we? We're not gonna watch that video because we need to practice a little bit after these tips. And then uh, here we are. Okay, so techniques to improve English speaking skills. So now that you have a strong foundation, you can apply some techniques to hone, improve your English speaking skills. Number five, it says speed shadowing. That is going to be for Juan Miguel Brand. Okay, <clears throat> speech shadowing. In a nutshell, this technique is about imitation. You listen to how a native speaker says something and try to copy it. Pick your favorite video with subtitles. Make sure that is something you enjoy watching because you will. Listen to it, listen to it many times. Listen to the video once and read the subtitles to get a good grasp of the general content and flow. While, I, while you are playing it again, complete the next step. The next step. Imitate the narrator sentence by sentence. Play, listen, pause, speak. Record optional. Copy the speech pattern as best as you can. With enough shadowing, you will naturally get closer um, to sounding like a native speaker. Just make sure to pick videos with the same kind of English accent. Good, perfect. What do you get from this? In general, this technique, it's about a, um, to copy or no, uh, a kind of, of copy uh, the, not, not the idea. Um, I mean, the, the style uh, of people uh, who are talking, who are uh, singing, who are uh, acting in a movie or something like that and trying to uh, to repeat, but uh, in the best way or in the way that uh, this person or these people do. Uh, in my case, like I said before, I, I learned a, a phrase uh, um, once, it, it was like, uh, I don't know how, uh, maybe 10 or 15 years ago uh, in a movie they they told uh, they they were talking about two persons or two people were talking about uh, it was CSI Miami or something like that and one say to the other uh, um, I'm wonder if uh, I don't know uh, uh, something like that but this this uh, this phrase 
this phrase that uh, it was, I'm wonder, I, I'm wonder if I didn't know what exactly it says, but when I uh, say this, uh, this episode, uh, in my case, I think that I uh, learned uh, this phrase, uh, um, how to say, in, in the, in, by, by the episode or by the sitcom, okay? And another phrases uh, in my vocabulary that are uh, because of that, trying to copy or trying to uh, understand and pronounce the way that uh, people uh, try to, to pronounce the, the words or the sentence or the, or the phrase, okay? In my case, it it has uh, it has no sense. I don't know if, if the correct uh, phrases uh, it has served to me much. Okay. So it mm -hmm. made some match in your mind. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. That is true. I mean, uh, sometimes. That happens, I mean, has happened to me. Sometimes, I mean, there are words or phrases that we don't know what they are for, or how you can use. And sometimes you're watching in a video and then then you get to understand, right? That is a, good, a very good thing on the level that we have right now. So you will be able to, to watch a video and then understand a word because of the context, because of what they're saying, right? And then you will be able to use it. So that is a very good thing. And, uh, Actually, this is a very good technique. I believe that the most of the people, what they do is to watch a video and that's it, right? To see if we understand, to check how is the pronunciation of the word, but this technique is a little bit more than that. So you need to, to say, to repeat, to try to mirror, right? And then if possible, record yourself and then compare. So if you do that one, definitely your pronunciation is going to be good. And also your accent, that is going to be a very good thing. Good. Yeah, when uh, this uh, music group, Linkin Park, when they come uh, about uh, 2000, uh, I try to, to learn how they pronounce because the the pronunciation is very, for me, it's very complex. It's kind of a tongue twister. So I try to to listen the songs and trying to repeat. Uh, obviously, first of, of all, trying to understand, and after this, uh, trying to repeat or trying to to. Uh, to find the meaning, to find the right meaning, okay? That is true. Yeah, uh, in music, music is for me one of the best sources for you to learn English. I mean, um, I will tell you something. I never went to, to learn English by myself. I just learned with music. Since I was a kid, I really loved music. I used to sing the sounds, but I was interested in checking what they meant. So I was able to understand, and that was very good for me because I discovered many things, not only English, but many other things in music. And then uh, suddenly I was able to speak. I mean, just by listening to music and singing the songs. Of course, um, whenever I had to, to speak, I had to research some other things by myself, but it's a very good way. So maybe the one thing that we need to, to check is that we're different and that we are going to learn in different ways. Some people, they are going to learn only by going to English classes. Some other people, they learn better by reading books or uh, watching TV. So you have to find that. You have to find what is the best way for you as individual for you to learn what will be, and then you will be on the right path. And uh, there are, uh, I mean, the practice also with other people is also very important. I also have a, a son, he is 15 years old. And, um, you know, I was trying to teach him when he was like 12 years, but he was like, I don't want to be in class. This is so boring. And I tried to make it fun, but it was not possible. 
But one day, well, he really loves video games. And one day he came and he said, you know, I want this video game. And, and I say, how much is it? And it was like 80 bucks. And I said, okay, let's do something. Uh, we're going to speak only in English. If you say one word in Spanish during the day, um, you fail. And I'm going to give you $1 every day so you can get whatever you want. So, and now he speaks English. I mean, sometimes, okay. sometimes some people, they come from, from the street and they knock on the door and he forgets. He says, what do you want? My, my father is inside of the house. And he forgets, he speaks only in English. And I mean, I never taught him grammar. He's able just to speak. He did it by himself, only by speaking with me. So everybody, we have different ways of, of learning English. Try to find your own way and enjoy it. Just do it and you will be very good. Uh, let's check some vocabulary. Nutshell, what is to be, uh, something in a nutshell? In a war. In a war, like in a, like the core, right? Like something like the more basic, the most important thing. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. What is to enjoy? To have, have fun, fun, maybe. To have fun, very good. Uh, let's see. There are no other words, I guess. No. Okay, self-talk. That is going to be for, let's see. Um, who has any red? Fernando. Okay, teacher. Self talk. Yep. Okay. Uh, talk to yourself. Sorry, talk to yourself in English loudly. It can be anything from a suggestion like, Shall we go get a glass of water or a reminder? I need to do a lot of laundry today. Alternatively, pick up a book and read a couple of pages out loud. It exercise my slow down your reading, but it will speed out your speaking skill. You can also record yourself, listen to the recording, and watch out for any wrong pronunciation. If it is possible, ask for feedback from a native speaker. A native speaker. A native, native speaker. Okay, so what did you get from this one? Um, it's an interesting <coughs> technique. I, I I often put in practice, I talk myself because I don't have um, no one for practice in my home or in my work, but I try to describe my, my activities or I try to talk myself. And um, uh, two weeks ago, I, I bought a, a book my favorite saga in English because I tried, I would try to read and restart him, but is there a lot of world that I, I don't know, but I try to, I try to follow, follow the rain, but it is, it's, it's complicated, but I try to, I try to do. And I have a comment teacher for number five, so shall we? Uh, yesterday or the day before, I'm not sure. I saw a video that about this technique, and this this video talking about that you you can search uh, videos or interviews with your favorite actor or actress, and and try to and try to imitate and try to imitate their their phrases, their accent. Even the, the even the or all all the interview even the, the, the entire interview. And I I read a comment that it's a good technique, try to imitate. Uh, if for you enjoy it, it's a good way to, to do because it's a person that you admire. 
um, it can it can be helpful. Very good, perfect. Thank you for your comments. And yeah, I mean, um, again, we need to do something that we enjoy. For example, you are reading something that is your favorite book, your favorite saga, and that is amazing. Of course, in books you are going to find vocabulary that is kind of um, uh, it's not that common, right? It's not like the regular book, but that is good because you are going to have more vocabulary. So you will be able to spread yourself in different ways though. Yeah. And which saga is the one that you would like? Uh, it's, it's more, it's more hard. It's more hard because the, the, the writing, the writer, because the writer is Britain. Ah, British English, yeah. It's British, good. it's British, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the name of the, of the saga is the Hitchhiker Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, that's a good one, nice. Yeah, Douglas Sands. Yeah, that's pretty good, perfect. Yeah, but it's a, it's a hard English because yeah. it, it's British and it's uh, in some, some parts is double sense. And a lot of idioms. So that is true. It, it's complicated, but I love that that saga. I, I read in, in Spanish. Ah, okay. And, <laughs> but I, I don't know. Some years ago, I tried to read in in, in English, but in, in digital, a book. Oh, new book. Uh -huh. But no, when I say try to to do the 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 I don't know, that is salto. Yeah, to jump in. To jump into a physical book. And some days, a uh, couple of weeks ago, I found in Latin America, Latin America, I think. No, in, inter international, international library. Oh. And, and I don't know, I, I don't think, or I don't think twice. How do I say? No lo pensé dos veces. I didn't think it twice. I didn't think it twice. I, I, I both. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I mean, that is something that we need to do. We all. So if you enjoy something, buy the movie, buy the book that you want. Uh, right now, you feel it difficult, but you will see that if you read the whole book at the end, it's going to be very easy. It's going. You are going to understand very fluent many things. It's going to be very good. That is a very good experience, and that is something good what you have done. Nice. I was happy. <laughs> I know that you're happy. So that's the thing that you enjoy, right? And you are learning. I, I decide to, to was happy. Okay, good. Perfect. Yes, that's the way it is. That's the attitude, my friend. Okay, so let's check if there is any word here. I don't think so. Not in this. Okay, self-talk is, is a good thing. Try to do it with, the, with this as well, with thinking in English. So that is going to be for, let's see. Ada. Okay, teacher. Uh, the thinking in, in English. Yeah. And you are already thinking in English is take less time to produce or respond in everyday conversation, no translation need. A good way to start rethinking is to keep a diary where you express your daily thought in English. I does not have to be perfect. It's more about getting uh, auto in English with less and less effort. Um, uh, thinking in English is for me is dependent you live the level or level. Level, yeah. It's like it that a level is I like it that you the first and think oh why uh, you are going to stay in Spanish and the then translate into into is, is in English. But if you think in English, you won't have to translate anything. Uh, for also is you think in English, uh, you will be able to assimilate, assimilate 
assimilate, assimilate, assimilate the language bit better. This means that in the, the future, future, you will learn English to what to do on even uh, how to think about and um, to communicate. And you assimilate the English, you want to remember a rules and the pronunciation, pronunciation every time. For example, and uh, make a uh, new conversation for the people, for the my partners, for the my family, um, the um, use you in my phone. For example, set to this blog and I think in English and to know a into new a new gate in the in the phone and the computer and leave a notes in your my house, your my office, your my your my job. And very very important to improve the the new vocabulary. For example. Okay, very good. That is it. So imagine if you if you do this together with other techniques. So for example, like learn one five words every day. And if you think in English all the time, I mean that is going to change your, your mind. I know that we have checked that before. We say this some of these tips before, but we need to actually do it. That is very, very important. Uh, let's see if there is any word here. No words. Nope. Okay, number eight. Retell a story in English. Uh, Yvonne, is it possible for you? Not possible. Okay. okay. Wilfredo. Yes, the train. Uh, Retell a story in English. Take a challenge a step farther by a retelling story. You retrace other people's line of those in your own words. I will start with a familiar story from your culture. Your translation needs to convey not only the meaning of the words, but all re rhetorical and culture nouns. Altern alternatively, alternatively, yeah. You can choose different words to retell a simple story in English. Start from the basics, reading something like a fairy tale or fable, either way will be beneficial to your English communication skills. Okay, very good. What did you get from this? Um, this is a, a, a little advice in how to create an English story. And he, well, the, the, the I guess that we can say the, Because um, um, the the reader, the the reader, the reader, uh, have to think um, first. Oh well, could use his own family to to write the story, and uh, use the what the english skills but first they has to read some fable or a fairy tale to to catch up the idea how to do that okay very good so that is it i mean uh this is a very good thing for you to to practice right you can tell a story in english so yeah you can start with words that you know already and try to get everything together right it's a very good thing so uh let's check some words what is let's say you retrace what is retrace
remember teacher it might be some like remember yeah to go back and check what other people's thought or what they did or things like that, right and there was another one what is to come be Conversion, con conversion. Actually, it's not that. It's not convention. Can be is like when you are able to deliver a message, to transmit okay. a message. Transmit. Okay. What is something that is rhetorical? Like expressing a good using good words or something like that. Okay, yeah, something rhetorical is like things that how can I say that? Uh, speaking about something like in a cultural way, you will be able to to say something that you know the answer about that one. So that is a like a rhetorical, and actually cultural nuance that is the other one. Uh, by any chance, do you know what is nuance? The last time you <laughs> you told us that uh, meaning, I remember that it's like um, there's something that can have a little a a, a lot of meaning but uh, if in, in some some time uh, this is highlighted something like that in a way okay yeah something like that so it's slightly different from one from the other one right there is any other i don't think so uh well what is a fairy tale Fairy tales is, are those stories like Cinderella. Like uh, from Disney. <laughs> okay, very good. Those are fairy tales, right? That that like magical, but not like the real life. And the other one is a fable. What is a fable? It's like a tale, but <laughs> mm, with animals, <laughs> I, I, I think <laughs> it, it left you a message. Very good. So that is a fable. So are like stories that include some animals or some kind of situations there with um, objects or things like that. And that at the end, uh, the objective is to deliver a message, uh, something like Islam moral, anything like that. Moral. Good. So frequently practice to improve your English speaking skills. That is going to be for Francisco Eduardo. Is it possible for you? Not possible. Then uh, let's see, Marcus. Okay, um, frequently practice in, to improve your English speaking skills. Okay, practice, practice makes perfect. So do you speak English in plenty. Some people think that they don't know how the opportunity to practice speaking because they don't live in the US or another English speaking country. They might also be discouraged because English is not used at your workplace or they, not, or they don't not know any native speaker. There is some validity, validity in those excuses, but not to let them hinder your learning. Thanks to the growth of globalization and technology, you have more chances and error to practice speaking English. You'll find many ideas below. Okay, so what did you get from this? Okay. Um, 
the I understand that some, for example, we put some excuses like we don't have the the good environment to to practice our, our English, or we don't live in a country where is the English where the English is spoken. So sometimes we stop or to to practice the or, or English in in a daily basis. So we um gradually um forget it so it's not um a good practice we we should to practice every day and with the globalization with the tools with the videos youtube and a lot of uh, programs and we have the opportunity to practice every day even if we don't live in a country where the english is spoken so we can use that the technology in order to practice our, our English and learn every day and gain vocabulary and learn and gain fluency and, and listening too. So very good, that is it. I mean, yeah, sometimes we believe that we don't have the time, that we don't have the resources, but nowadays, I mean, with all the resources that we have, actually, it's going to be very easy. If you really, really want to improve your English, I mean, you don't have to be all day long uh, doing something. But if you watch a video, if you learn two or three words, if you think in English, I mean, that is something that is doable and you will be able to improve. Very good, perfect. Uh, let's see some words. What is plenty? A lot of something. Very good. What is, my friends, discouraged? Okay, discourage just like when you the, are, go ahead, sorry. Um, the opposite is to motivate it, <laughs> something like that. That is it, discourage just like when you don't feel very good, not motivated, not, you feel down in the dumps, right? So you don't feel very good in your mind or in your, the way of your feelings, so that is it. Let's see, hinder, what is hinder? Something that stop you, or like a barrier, or like I don't know, something like that. Very good. That is it. So it's when something is reducing or stopping your improvement. In this case, English learning. Okay, so let's move on to number nine. That is going to be for Ana Claudia. Oops. Participate in public speaking events. Big universities, uh, theaters, and cultural societies organize events like open debates, spoken word, reading, and improvise. Is that the correct way? Improvise? Improvise, yeah. Oh, okay. Improvise storytelling uh, gathering. These are places where you can come and mingle with like minded people. Like minded, yeah. Uh, minded people and practice speaking English. Many cities are now hosting TED or TEDx talks where you can register to participate and share your innovation ideas. Check the events page of your local university to see if there are any available. It might be a nerve wracking experience, but it will be great for your English. Good, what do you get from this? Mm, yes, it's a very good option. Uh, the examples that this is posting here, the TED or the TEDx, wow, those are um, speakers um, that they have values, they have something to admire, they made something unique. 
uh, I saw some videos for some TED or TEDx speakers. Uh, and, and I just can imagine being in an event like that. It could be great. And I think that listening uh, to the speaker or to the one in charge of that event is uh, it will force us to uh, get a better comprehension of the main idea. Because in that case, we won't be like, uh, let's say, um, I, thinking in Spanish, every word they will say, we must take the, the whole concept, the whole idea. That is an example, but there are also other options like going to a theater, maybe going to the movie uh, just without the, the subtitles. That's a good idea. Watching a, a movie, watching TV, news. Mm -hmm. okay. But public speaking events, it must be great to, to stay right there. Yeah, I believe that this is something that uh, is very big. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, it's not the same to speak here in the class. That mm -hmm. in mind that I say tomorrow you are going to go to the university and you are going to present this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the nervous and to prepare the material and be ready for the questions, which is going to happen definitely. It's not that easy, right? But it's something and, that would be most important is that there is no translators. Exactly, mm -hmm. that, that is good. So, and then uh, you will be able to, I mean, mm -hmm. if you present, you will be able to improve your English a lot, definitely. And mm -hmm. if you are just listening and asking questions, learning some, some from that one, of course, you are also going to be, I mean, it's not the same to watch a video that to be with somebody in person, right? Exactly. Good, perfect, perfect. So let's check some words. Uh, It says story storytelling gatherings. What is that? Mm. Actually, it's improvised storytelling gatherings. What is that? like to have a, maybe a conversation, but what as for um, a specific topic? Okay, very good, something like that but, one. But, right? uh -huh. but, but uh, that comes not like naturally, like the conversation that we have maybe sometimes at the end of the class or at the last minutes, something that is not planned. Very good, that is it. So it's like, you're going to say something about anything and that's it actually today we're going to try to practice i guess we will have some minutes for that one so uh, yes and uh, i mean for example in mind that we can and uh, actually we're going to do it uh, we're going to uh, let's say on friday i guess it's going to be the day that we're going to come and and, and tell a horror story so that's going to be for friday and actually for tomorrow you have a homework Tomorrow, we're going to do an activity that is called bring and tell. What is going to happen? You are going to bring something. It might be a picture of an event. It might be an object. It might be anything. And you are going to describe why you brought that to the class and why this is important for you or special or why do you like that. So tomorrow, everybody, please bring something to the class and you are going to tell us about that. Okay. Any question about the homework? It will be the picture of an object or, or, or anything. Yeah, whatever you want to bring that is important for you that represents that important. If it's, if it's, for example, a party that you got, maybe the picture of that party. If it's, for example, I remember that you were telling us about some flowers, some plants. You can bring the flower or a picture of the flower. So, and you can explain what is this, what it is about, why do you like, things like that. Okay. Very good. So that is for tomorrow. Actually, this week and the next week, we're going to try to 
to practice a little bit more. Let's see, uh, mingle, what is to mingle? Okay, mingle is like when you go to a place and you are free to move from one way to another. Sometimes there are some conferences like that one, you know? Sometimes I remember that here in, in, in Centro Cultural, they do things like that. For English, it's amazing. I mean, there are, at the same time, there are like 10 conferences. Hey, my goodness, you, you want to go to this or to this or to this, and you can go to one and you don't like it, you can go to another one. So that is it, something like that is mingle. Like in like, like interact with with a group of people, something like that one. Yeah, you. I mean, there are some. Another thing that is very common in the U.S. is that when you're single and you are looking for a boyfriend or a girlfriend, there are places where you go and you meet with one person. Right? You speak five minutes with that people just to check if you have something in common, and then you change, you switch to other people, and then try to meet that person, try to say something. If you didn't like somebody, you go home and that's it. But that is interesting. I mean, it's a way for you to practice with many people at the same time. So you can go, well, like when you go to a party, right? Yeah, parties from the work, from the job. You go and speak with somebody and then with somebody else's and then with somebody else's. Something like that one, is it? The other one says like-minded people. What is that? People who think like you, like like the way you like the way you think. Very good. So people that have some things in common, right? So, for example, if you go to to this, uh, uh, there is uh, an event for Star Wars that is on May the Fourth, right? May the Fourth be with you. So yeah, everybody's speaking about Star Wars, right? If you go and speak about I don't know, Westworld, they're going to say, you do not belong here. So that is it, something like that. And let's see, there is no other word here, I guess. Okay, go to a language cafes. Here we don't have that one, but it could be a good idea, right? So let's see, um, Heidi, could you please help us with number 10? Sure, go to language cafes. If public speaking terrifies you, and I know it does for many, you can opt for language cafes. Those cafes create a friendly and relaxing atmosphere for people who want to practice and exchange languages. You can find language cafes through local universities or the meetup groups available in your cities. Okay, As so the one you have just said, Brad. I didn't know Centro Cultural had that kind of, of uh, places. They have not cafes, but they have like conversation groups. So you can go and speak. I mean, there are topics like the, the things that we do sometimes here that we don't have a specific topic or I bring a topic like today I brought a topic and we're going to discuss about that one. So that is it. Or we can get together anytime, right teacher? Yeah, yeah, you can get there. Uh, actually, uh, another thing that we can do if you want, someday we can get together and have something to eat, but speak only in English, right? And okay. we're, as I was telling you, this week and the next week, we're going to try to practice a little bit more. So the book is almost done. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to check some more other things about the book. But then, I mean, we are going to be free just to, to speak freely. So we're going to do some activities about that. And there are no words. Okay. So using apps that is going to be for, let's see. Danny. Okay. And using apps. Yep. And using app. Uh, another option is to use an app to talk to native native speakers online in the comfort on your own home. Some popular apps are Hello Talk, Hello Talk, and Tandem. Uh, basically, you re register for an account, introduce yourself, 
your native language and your hobbies. Um, the app will find you some matches. The people who speak English and, and want to practice the language you, you know well, you know well. Uh, all you need to do is to press a few buttons and start talking. Okay, so what did you get from this? Um, I remember that, uh, I don't know if it is Duolingo that uh, has these features in the, in some, when you got in some level, you can uh, find some, some person and that you can talk with and they uh, they um, there is pri a, a different prices that they they put in in, in that uh, uh, in the app uh, for example i saw uh, from five dollars uh, to fifty dollars something like that and and you can talk with uh, with the person in, um, and it, it it say um, if it is a person a native or something like that. And I I think it's a it's a very good way to to practice. Like the the paragraph say in in this case is hello talk and tandem. The the time then I already know, but hell talk I I didn't know. Okay, very good. So as I was telling you before, there are many resources. I mean, if you really want to practice, you can do it in many, many, many ways. Nowadays, with all the technology, all the resources, they are in your hand, in your cell phone, you have a lot of resources. So definitely, this is something good. Okay, and this is the last one. Chat with Siri, this is a good one. Uh, let's see, this one is going to be for um, Giselle. Okay, chat with Siri. I find chatting with Siri is a great way to force myself to speak more clearly. As Siri is a machine, you cannot rely on environmental clues and facial gestures to get your ideas across. Your words are the only tool you have to make yourself understood. Thus, you need to speak as clearly and precisely as you could. Another plus point of using Siri is that she is always available, as long as your phone is charged and connected to a Wi-Fi network. Just press the home button and start asking questions. What did you get? If from you me? own, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If you own an Android smartphone, you can practice speaking with Google now. Perfect. So actually, I do that feature. I speak with Siri, uh, and actually, Siri is in English. So when I want to ask, uh, something to her or, or that her search, search something for me or just put a song. It's like, hey, hey Siri, please um, do this song or uh, play that song. And actually it really helps. In my personal case, I think that it really helps. This kind of uh, tool. Very good. So yeah, I mean, as I was telling you, nowadays it's amazing what you can do. And you can have an actual conversation with Siri, with the Google system, with the one from Amazon. Uh, you can ask them to tell you a joke, to ask for a good restaurant, um, many things. I mean, nowadays that is a lot. Actually, there is a movie about that kind of situation that is called Her, where the guy f falls in love with the virtual assistant that was kind of crazy, but it's because he was speaking too much and she was able to understand him better than any other person in the world because it's the machine learning that you will be able to train, right? So it understands what you like or you dislike. So it's a very good thing that you can do. Good, good. 
so we're going to stop about the reading here and let's do some practice. So let's speak about a topic that I was thinking about today. So uh, let's speak about TV shows. What are your favorite TV shows and why? I would like to know. Anybody can start. I don't know if uh, if this is a TV show. I think it's uh, so popular. It's Peter El Escamos. <laughs> okay, good. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, obviously that's in Spanish, but uh, I like I like all the situations that this man uh, is uh, involved because uh, just with one little lie, uh, he gets, uh, but quickly, in problems. So in order to, to, to get away from this problem, he uh, invents another lie uh, to, to save the, the situation, but, <laughs> Um, in order to to get another problem and like this and like this it's very hilarious this man in all the situations that the family has uh, or the or the the personages i don't know or the characters ah, okay or, or the characters they have in spanish and in english uh, lately i have seen many uh, documentaries about serial killers, uh, those uh, kind of documentaries are very uh, characteristic because uh, the way that characters are uh, in parts of all, uh, they are like so very sociable, very kind, very polite, but at the time that they uh, face the he their their reality, they are they are mean. They are so uh, bad, and obviously at the end they kill uh, people just by uh, just by uh, como solo porque sí. Just because. Just because. Uh huh. And uh, uh, all the situations the the police department uh, try to solve or try to figure figure uh, they are very um, very weird because uh, they, there are some people who uh, are very smart and they try to uh, to to hide all the proofs uh, against them, against them, uh, but there are some little thing that the bad people forget, and that's the way uh, when the police uh, get a um, um, arrest uh, these these evil people. Okay, very good. Well, that, that is, sounds good. I never saw uh, Peter, I don't know how to say Escamas, to be honest with you. But... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just remember the, the song and the, and the his uh -huh, uh -huh. dances, like, I don't know. That's that's something I remember I, I didn't see. But about about serial killers also is very interesting. I really like that one because I really like to, to try to understand human behavior, right? And those yeah. people are kind of, bad people but it's interesting how they think how they are and there are many tv shows about that one i remember that i was watching something that was called manhunter i guess yeah and that was about the first time the F the fbi was trying to get some serial killers and interviewing them mm -hmm. and trying to understand them so it was very interesting they they create a at, at this time a, the bau behavioral analysis unit uh, and after this, or after that, in our time, uh, there is there, there is criminal minds who has uh, 
this task, okay? Uh, try to try to get arrest these evil people. Yeah, it's very interesting. I don't know. Uh, do you believe that exists serial killers in Latin America? Uh, I, I believe that maybe they are, but not that many. All of those are either in Europe or in the United States. That's interesting. I don't know what's, what's wrong. Okay, any other people wants to share about your favorite TV show, TV sitcoms or anything like that? Me? Uh, Go ahead. Very, very fast. Um, I like uh, a lot um, Rick and Morty. <laughs> I don't know oh, if you amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. <laughs> Rick and Morty. I like a lot the the uh, that series. It's about uh, 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 science fiction sitcom, right? When, with the with the Rick, the, the grand and uh, Morty, the grandson, that <laughs> they have intergalactic adventures. But <laughs> I like a lot that kind of um the. Um, uh, I don't know <laughs> the the series and all the all the the kind of thing that happened and the the kind of humor. I don't know how to say, <laughs> yeah, but humor. it's a very rude, very rude humor. Ah, it's <laughs> yeah. dark humor. Yeah. It is very and it and also is very it's very good to practice to to, to try to follow. The way that they they talk um, mostly from uh, Rick, they talk very fast, very very fast. <laughs> I try to follow, but uh, uh, as you think, I I I cannot follow <laughs> and all the words that they say. Yeah, actually, that is a very good show. I really like that one. Rick and Morty is. One of my favorites, I never miss one chapter of that one. And uh, it's crazy. I mean, the results, how, how things start and how they end. I mean, it's crazy. They sometimes they show some crazy thing. And the animation is, is very good as well. Good, anybody else wants to share? Well, in my case, I enjoy uh, watch uh, the Big Bang Theory. But to be honest, I always uh, finish the video on Spanish because they are talking very fast. And you know, there is a group of scientists Science. trying to sense, yeah, trying to, I don't know, comp, comp, maybe Putting something. <laughs> yeah, but in the weird words, and if that uh, the reason why it's really complex for me to try to understand that English, but uh, when they are talking about some uh, common topic, I change the language to English and then I finish in Spanish. Okay. But I enjoy that, that series because they are younger than the others and maybe, yeah, no, Maybe they are Gen C, right? Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I think that we are in the same. And we are not uh, having the same problems, but it's, 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 it's fun. Yeah, actually, I really like that as well. I watched the whole thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, the vocabulary sometimes is hard to follow in English, uh, even when they are speaking about, about scientists things and, and actually they speak mm -hmm. very fast, right? So, mm -hmm. and you really want to understand. So what I did on that one, I, I, I watched that in English with the subtitles. So I'm able to, whenever they speak things like that, that of course, we don't understand very well. And you need to go and check mm -hmm. onto that one, it's easier. But it's very good, I really mm -hmm. liked it. Some platforms that don't have that uh, feature. For example, HBO. Uh, if you if, uh, if you want to to listen in in English, uh, they don't have the titles in English, just in another in language, and, and that make it <laughs> a little bit complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard. Yeah. yeah then you are following. Yeah. 
you try yeah. to watch here and you are like that's not that good yeah. yeah but that was very good that actually is one of, was one of my favorite i really liked everything from the very beginning there were some chapters that were not that good but the ending was very good as well the ending was good there were some chapters very good like when when i don't remember the the name of the the mom of uh, the man that never comes into into screen and then she dies she died in the real life that chapter was very good also when they get married when at the end they get the Nobel prize i mean it was very good very nice <laughs> very funny as well okay anybody else wants to share hey, teacher go ahead um about that i i started to watch in my one of my favorite series in its original language breaking bad okay and i i know the story i know the story but obviously i don't remember the dialogue but uh sometimes and I'm, I'm very surprised because i understand the the, the entire phrases that some characters say it's, and but other time i don't understand nothing because uh, some character has uh, uh i don't know that ad, his accent is very very complicated i i only understand some words but a uh, other character has a clear differentiation but sometimes speaking fast and i i am lost again but i try to i try to follow i know the story and uh, some dialogues i maybe i i i don't know i understand that the principal idea but it's a good it's a good way because it's a story that I know and because I choose that that series uh, because a new series maybe <laughs> it's complicated to follow and I don't have that responsibility now okay yeah that is a very good as well I really love that one and right now it's showing on uh, the, uh, the spin-off spin right yeah yeah yeah. Are, yeah, yeah. are you seeing that one as well? Yes. Today right. I saw the last the last chapter. Very, very good. Oh, I haven't yeah. seen the whole thing, but I, I I'm I stopped until the shocking moment where you know the other lawyer was killed. Oh my goodness. Oh uh, yeah, the the final of the season. Yeah, that was that was crazy. Don't spoil, please. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, I'm watching. <laughs> okay. That the spin off is, is maybe better than the original or at the same level. But yeah, I it's guess very, this, very good. Yeah, I this. don't know if it's better because Breaking Bad is Breaking Bad. And I think it's the, <laughs> it's, it's the top for me for all the theories. But the Sopranos too. <laughs> Ah, the Sopranos is also a very good one. Yeah, you're Breaking right. Breaking Bad is very. Good. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Breaking Bad twist your mind. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's crazy. It was, but you know, you, uh, it touches something that is very real. Uh, yesterday, I was telling you that in, in the training, they told us that nobody wakes up in the morning and says, "Today, I'm going to crash my car and I'm going to fight with my boss." Nobody, right? So the same happens with bad people. There are situations that pushes them. Of course, they take the, the decisions that are not correct, right? Everybody, we are able to take the right or the wrong decision, the easy way or the long way. Uh, but that happens. That happens is because some situations that people are pushed sometimes and they take bad situations and then they they become bad people and that's why the name of the tv show was breaking bad it's like becoming bad right i was a good person but my, my life was not good and then the situation came when i had to do something about it he saw the opportunity that was not a good opportunity and took it and that happens in real life i i believe i really believe that one it's a very good show and better call Saul. i believe that the last the last seasons are very good. Maybe the first ones were not that good, but the last ones are very, very good. Yeah, 9.9 .9 and IMDb. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, anybody wants to share one more?
Okay, of course it's late, so we're going to finish. And I'm going to check the attendance, definitely. So we're gonna finish today. So, Ada, Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present. Good. Ana Claudia González Velasco. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present, Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present, teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present, teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present, teacher. Good. <coughs> María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Omaña. Good. Ro, uh, Roberto Luis Omaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Good, Suleima. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure being with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow, of course, and dream in English. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.